No matter who we are, what we've gone through, or what we own, it's our perception of the world that determines our peace of mind. You may make positive, eternal changes to your life by realizing that you are the only person that affects your well-being. In your darkest moments, when your heart feels tender and broken and wide open, I hope you'll turn to the wisdom within you to make those changes. Hello and welcome. This is Sandra Hart at Life Over 60. Thank you so much for coming by again to join me for just a few minutes for this conversation. And actually, I have to let you in on a little secret. This is the uh, the second time that I've done this and I don't want to do this anymore, but I left the ceiling fan running and I could hear the worry, worry, worry back when I put on my headphones. And I know a lot of you watch YouTube videos with your headphones, so I thought it would be quite annoying for you to join me and have that noise in the background. So here we go again. And it's really ironic because the title of this is I don't want to do this anymore. And I have to explain it to you. I was looking at my videos the other day and I remembered a video that I did uh, just in the middle of COVID about um, in March, the same time in 2021. And I listed this whole list, 10 things that I vowed that I was never, ever going to do again. I didn't need to do it because I knew how to do it myself. And why shouldn't I just do it myself? And one of them was cutting my hair, grooming the dog. I had a whole list of things. And I can put the link below if you haven't seen that video. Well, I really felt bad. I saw that video and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm at a different place in my life right now. So I guess, you know, nothing is ever written in stone and it's okay for me to change things up. So I was feeling so guilty that I thought, hey, you know what, I'd better do a video and update that and let people know exactly what I'm doing it today because, you know, I am at a different point in my life. But I was forced to do some of these things because of my beautiful daughter. <laughs> I was I shampooed my hair and was sitting and I thought, well, you know, after watching my last video, it was my hair was kind of like a witch, you know, all over the place. So I'd better trim it a little bit. So I started to get my scissors out and I was trimming a little bit on the end. And my daughter came in and she says, Mother, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm cutting my hair. She said, COVID is over, Mother. She said, you don't have to do that anymore. You really need to get a trim and you need a professional grooming. Well, I was a little, she shamed me. <laughs> she really did. I thought, well, I'm not that good at cutting my hair, but being curly, you know, I can hide all the mistakes. And then all of a sudden I realized I am at a different point in my life. I need a little bit of pampering. I really do. So I called the salon as, as you can see, I went and I got my hair cut. And honestly, it was such a pleasure. I was relaxed. I, I really enjoyed myself. And I have to realize that I am truly, and maybe you are too, we're at a different point in our lives than when we were in the middle of COVID. And I really enjoy getting my hair cut. So I don't want to cut my hair anymore. I just don't want to do that. And another thing that I had, of course, was grooming um, with Sophie. Now, Sophie is totally blind now, and she has little arthritis. She's 15 years old. And as I explained in my other video, every time I took her to the groomers, my gosh, she would stiff leg me, and just I had to slide her into the groomers. It was so awful for her. It was awful for me. And I knew that I was just making her so unhappy and miserable. So I thought, hey, I have clippers. I can do this myself. For two years, I was grooming Sophie. 
but she weighs about 35 pounds and I'm a year or two older and it was getting very difficult for me to lift her up into the sink because of her blindness and she was a little scared. She didn't know where she was and she would cry the whole time I was bathing her. I didn't know what to do. I thought, you know, she's the kind of dog that you really have to groom and, and wash, you know, about every couple of weeks. And I was taking her for a walk and I all of a sudden I saw this big white van parked along the street with these pretty puppies on the side, pictures of and I talked to the groomer and sure enough she was a mobile groomer. I now am sending Sophie to the mobile groomer. But the mobile groomer comes to her. It's just so awesome. They come to her. They pick her up at the elevator, take her down. She's groomed, and within about an hour or so, she comes back, and she has either a pretty bow in her hair or a beautiful scarf, and she is so happy. So I have released myself, and I'm not going to do that anymore. Sophie gets professional grooming. If I'm going to go to the salon, she should be able to go to the salon too, but when it comes to her, it makes her more comfortable. So those are two things that I have changed up. And remember in my video that I did on what I, uh, my diet, the things that I've changed in my eating patterns, and I talked about my aura ring, O-U-R-A ring, and how I was having problems sleeping, especially, um, during my caring for Arthur and then afterwards. I was not getting good sleep at all, so my doctor suggested that I get this ring so that I could monitor my sleep pattern. Well, one of the most wonderful subscribers, and her name was Rita, Rosie, Rosie, I'm sorry, I had to look, Rosie Glow. She told me about a neuro biology professor at Stanford University and she gave me a link to the video that he has put out on sleep patterns. Well I cannot thank you enough because this video changed my life and I am going to put a link below also to this. His name is Andrew Huberman and the way he explained it so easily was that we have biorhythms, we have cicada rhythms, and a lot of that is really programmed through our eyes. Even when our eyes are closed, the light that we see does affect our biorhythms. He suggested that every morning wake up to the sunrise. Spend at least 15 or 20 minutes watching the sun rise. And at night, if you can do the same thing, spend 10 or 15 mi minutes watching the sunset. As soon as I watched this video, the very next day I set my alarm and I woke up at the sunrise. I went upstairs in the garden and I watched the sunrise. Now you have to understand, my husband was a morning person and I had to get up with him very early all of the time. And when he passed, I thought to myself, I really am so tired. I'm not sleeping well. And I, I have to be able to sleep in so that I can make up the sleep that I've lost, you know, all of that time with him. But I was still so, so tired. And I was desperate to do anything getting back to the sunset. So I went up, I've been going upstairs in the garden every morning to watch that sunrise. And at night, if I don't go to the beach and sit there and watch the sunrise, I go back up in the garden and I spend 10 or 15 minutes watching the sunset. It is absolutely unbelievable. And, and she said that this has changed her life, and I'm telling you, this has changed my life completely. I am sleeping better, and I can monitor it on my ring. My sleep patterns are so much better. 
I'm getting more deep sleep. I'm getting more REM sleep. I'm not waking up as many times in the middle of the night. And the way Andrew tells it is that even when our eyes are closed, the sensors in our eyes are able to receive though that light through them. And, you know, I used to wear a sleep mask. I would shut my blinds. I would block out all the light in my room so that I would be able to get a good night's sleep. Well, now I don't sleep in a sleep mask. I am sure that my curtains are wide open at night so that when the light starts to come in my room, it my eyes can get it and it can go into my system or into my body, into my brain. All of these changes, not wearing a sleep mask, keeping my windows open so that the light hits me whenever it starts to come up, sitting and watching the sunrise and sitting and watching the sunset. But it has done something else for me that is so wonderful. It has made me slow down. It has given me time in the morning to meditate. While I'm sitting there, I can meditate and I can think of wonderful thoughts and somehow it's so calming. And at night, no matter, you know, I usually watch the news around five o'clock just for an hour, but I stop doing that. When sunset comes, I go up and I sit in my garden and I watch that sunset. And if I can take a walk with Sophie, I'll walk over to the beach and I will sit there. And there are other people there also doing the same thing. And I will watch the sunset. It is such a zen, peaceful feeling. But it's also helping me sleep better. Now, I know this sounds crazy. But if you please watch his video, if you're having any type of sleep problems, he will help you because it's helped me and he also has given a couple of natural supplements that you can take if you need an extra little boost to get to sleep so that is something that I am not going to do anymore I am not going to sleep in I'm not going to wear my sleep mask and I'm not going to keep my blinds closed at night I am going to welcome the light into my life as soon as it happens. Something else that I had on my list is uh, we have a Starbucks close by and when I would take a walk before COVID, I'd always stop into Starbucks, get a uh, cup of coffee that practically drained my bank account. <laughs> and I would do that on a regular basis. But during that COVID period, I said, do you know what? I don't need to spend all of that money on Starbucks when I can make a really good cup of coffee here myself. So I have been making coffee on my own ever since then. But I'm not going to do that on a regular basis anymore. Once in a while, I'm going to treat myself to coffee outside of the house. I found a little coffee house not far from us that's a lot cheaper than Starbucks because now that I am alone, I genuinely need the socialization. I need to get out and about and be with people. And I have found that that has helped me so very much. So I do apologize for that video that I did before when some of those things I felt for sure for the rest of my life, this is what I'm going to do. But I've given myself grace I've allowed myself to change because I'm at a different point in my life right now. And so are you. Maybe you don't want to change anything and you want the status quo to stay there forever. But I have found that at this point in my life, because I've lost my husband, because I am alone, that I really have to rethink some of those things that I said I was never going to do again. And actually... I probably down the road maybe will make some other changes because life is not static. But I just wanted to share with you, I apologize for that video at that time, but maybe there are things that you agree with in that video. But right now, I've allowed myself the grace 
of being able to change and to change my mind. So these are the things that I definitely are going to be doing from now on. And I am not going to be doing those other things anymore, at least for now. <laughs> maybe you could put a list down below of things that maybe you have changed or you're not going to change or you're happy with where you are. Anyway, that is my message today, the second time around. <laughs> I hope that you will do something good for yourself today and be kind to whomever crosses your path. And of course, let's all share the love and pray for world peace. And think about what you're doing now and if it's really what is making you happy. And maybe there's some things you can do to pamper yourself because absolutely, you are special, you are awesome, and you really deserve it. Take care, and I hope to see you in my next video.